Hi, Michael Bettine here once again talking about gongs. And today we are going to talk about putting a setup together, how to match instruments, how to come up with something that works for you. So grab a drink, maybe a snack, and we'll see you right here on It's Cup of Time. Okay, today we're going to talk about creating a setup. But first I'd like to mention you know, all these videos, I'm trying to do a video a week, and I have enough videos probably for the rest of the year planned out. So I'm going to keep trying to roll these out every Wednesday. So if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below so you can be notified when a new video is up. So I got a comment from Donald and he was talking about why don't you show us you know, how, how you put your setup together because they've got these new Peisty Bronze gongs. So what I wanted to do today is this is my current playing setup that I've used from since late May. And I want to talk about that, demonstrate it, and then I'm going to switch out some of the bronze gongs that I want to change to and show and talk about how that changes my setup and my approach. But first I really, you know, just want to talk about having various instruments. I'm a collector. I'm a professional percussionist, so I've played percussion for 50 years now. And I've collected percussion for that long. So, you know, if you see me with a lot of gongs and bowls and bells and drums and all kinds of things, I didn't buy that all in one week. That's a process of 40 or 50 years of buying and collecting instruments. So... I think that's important to know because some people go, well, how do you get all that stuff? Well, you know, just over time, you know, if you buy something here, you buy something there, pretty soon you got boxes full of little instruments, cases full of big instruments and things like that. So I think that's really important to understand. I mean, all the instruments I have were collected over a lifetime, really, ever since I was 12 years old when I started playing drums. So this setup, this is, I'm going to go through and explain it and play everything. And then I'll, do, I'll just do a little playing together and show how it works. But this is what I've been using since May uh, when I changed out a couple things because I bought some new gongs. Okay. So over here in the upper, what would be your left-hand corner, is a set of copper clad bells. And these have been picked out over the years to form a sort of melodic scale. You just don't go to the store and buy a set like that. At least I've never found a place like that. So those are all hand-picked over time. Uh, I have other bells that I don't use in this set because they have different tunings. But these have come from basically three different stores. And I always like to frequent those stores and, you know, check out what bells they have. Next, I have some Burma bells here. And again, they form sort of a melodic set, a melodic hole. This one here I got on eBay. These two are from Steve Weiss Music that I got at the Gong Summit. I also have a Sun Trigon that I like to use. 
and it fits into the set real well. This is apparently one of the first Trigons that Martin Blasey made. I got that one from Jens Zuge. And then I have three old Ufip Shing sound plates. I like using these because they have sort of a kind of a church bell, bell effect sound. I like that. So with the copper clad bells, the Burma bells, and the Shang, I have these melodic possibilities. I also have to say, normally right here in front of me, I have a big table filled with uh, singing bowls, rin bowls, drogo bells, shakers, other sort of instruments, small instruments. Now, I left it off today because I wanted you to be able to see everything here, especially see the lower tier of gongs and that. But I'll be talking about that in a separate video, how I put all those sounds together to form a very cohesive whole. And then I will use that with my whole setup in another video probably to show how everything works together. So here's my melodics again. notice some of the pitches are, are fairly identical between the, the two higher shang and two of the Burma bells. I like doing something like that where I will have similar pitches or identical pitches but using different instruments they have a very different texture to the sound. A shang does not sound anything like a Burma bell so I can have this melodic instruments and also my my bowls and things in front of me to play melodies to create that sense of melody and even harmony I'm a big fan of pop music I mean as a kid I grew up in the 60s and I was always listening to the radio and I love pop music I love a good melody uh, my wife is a pianist and she's also very much into Broadway and musicals so I've picked up that aspect too. And I, I'm just very much into song and melody. So when I'm playing, whether I'm playing a whole setup like this or even just one gong, I'm always thinking song, melody, and, and trying to play in some ways, you know, like more like a saxophonist or somebody else, trying to get that sort of same flow that you'll hear from a sax or a violin or a cello. Those are some of my inspirations. All right, let's look at the gongs. This is my main gong. This is a Peisty 32 inch symphonic I've had for 20 years. And everything is based off of that gong. And this gong goes with me every time. It's rare that I don't use this, whether I'm playing an improv session that I bring gongs to or a meditation session, yoga nidra, anything like that. I love this gong. So all the sounds are based off of this. And when I go shopping, I base them off of the sound of this gong when I'm buying new instruments. Does it fit? So this is the 32 inch symphonic. symphonic gong sound and it's just this is a really a wonderful gong now down here is a number four sound creation water gong I bought these two together along well actually I bought these three here that I'll talk about together these were my first 
purchase as an official Peisty endorser 20 years ago. I've got the symphonic, I've got the water gong. And I might as well jump to the other. I have a 22 inch Peisty accent gong. So back then, 20 years ago, when I was looking to get some gongs, I wanted a nice spread of sounds. I wanted different textures. I didn't want to just buy three different symphonic gongs in different sizes. To me, that, that was just kind of like, what's the point? You're going to have the same gong, but different tunings. I wanted three gongs. I wanted three very different gongs. So they have a different character. together they blend well so there it is that was my first pick up here I have a 28 inch planet Jupiter gong I bought that in a 24 inch Venus at the same time because again I wanted I wanted a different enough spread four inches between them that I'd have a high one and a low one so that was important to me and I like the solid sound of the planet gong versus the more open sound of the symphonic and actually the other two but this is a very solid so i probably got this one about i don't know 17 or 18 years ago and it, Again, my criteria was, I want something different. I didn't want to just buy a 28 inch symphonic and have kind of the same as this, but just a low, uh, higher pitch. I wanted something with a different character. So these two are quite you know, different in character, yet their pitches work out really well together. two gongs are newer gongs. This is the number nine bronze gong, 28 inch bronze gong. I got at Andy's Music last October when I went down there to open the crate of gongs that Andy had. And you can check on my YouTube videos when I was at Andy's, I've got a series of five videos all about the bronze gongs here. But I like this one because it had a more breathy quality. It was a little darker and I could really hear it adding, you know, to this setup. doesn't get the real highs that the nickel silver gets. The bronze tends to stay a little darker and I like that. And it's also fairly splashy where these are a little more, I guess you would say, crashy, a little stiffer. So, you know, hearing this, even without having my gongs with me, I heard this at Andy's and it was like, I need this one because I can really hear it working with my setup. Okay, this last gong is, is a different one. 
This is a small 22 inch heavy wind gong from Senton Cymbals and Gongs. I got this last May at the Chicago Drum Show. I was checking around all the booths. I was at the Senton booths and they had some gongs. So of course I had to go play them. And this was Sunday afternoon. He had three gongs left and I ended up buying all three of them. So thanks Arthur for the good deal. But I like this because it added, again, another dimension to the sounds I already have. I've never understood people who have like eight symphonic gongs or eight planet gongs that really all sound the same other than a different pitch. To me, I like to have different qualities of gongs. So this added heavy gong for a wind gong. So I can still get that solid note in the center, but a nice dark splash. So I really like the sound of that. It was it was different than most wind gongs of that size, which are a bit thinner and more more splashier and, and higher overtones. This is a darker one. So I thought that would fit in nicely with this whole setup. And I'll be doing a video on Chinese gongs and my sentient, sentient gongs a while later. Okay, let me just kind of play through all of these and give you an idea of how they, they, they really blend together well. I can move from one to another and it's not like whoa what was that you know it's like it's very seamless it, it does to me it doesn't sound as much like I'm really changing a gong I'm just moving the sound around sort of like if you're playing any other instrument and you just change pitches you know if you're on a violin and you just move up play a higher note move down play a lower note same thing if you're playing trumpet or sax or anything I think of this whole setup really is as one instrument. It's not you know, 20 separate instruments. It's one instrument. These are all different keys on my piano. So I think that's an important thing. If you want to build a setup, you, is to think of it as an integrated whole, not, oh, these are all separate pieces. So I'm going to play a little bit and use some of the melodic instruments in there just to give you an idea of how I fit some of those in.
there's just an example of trying to blend tones, different notes, and also textures. I think because playing percussion for so long, texture has really become a big part of what I do. And I like to bring in different textures. You know, a gong is different than a Burma bell, which is different than a copper bell, which is different than a singing bowl or a shaker or a rattle, something like that. I like to use different textures. So it's just not all the same sort of gongy thing all the time. Now I should talk about, I've got one other gong I use, and this is another new one. I always like to have a handheld gong. Usually it would be the accent gong that I could play handheld, but I got this 19 inch steel gong from Grotta Sonora in Italy back in, I think it was May. So I've been using this as a handheld and it adds a very different voice. This is a really thick piece of steel and it's more like a bell plate than a gong in many ways. It, it more resembles the shang here. But I like using that and the sonority of it and the texture and the sound and everything fits in real well with all of these. So that's my current setup since late May when I added the Sentent Heavy Wing Gong and the Grota Sonora Gong here. Now, take a break and I will switch gongs out to the new setup with the Heisty Bronze Gongs I plan on using. Be right back. Okay. Here we go, slightly different setup. And let me just talk about it. I've kept the 32 inch symphonic. As I said, this is my main gong that I base everything I do off of. So it stays there. In place of the 24 inch number four sound creation water gong, I have the number two bronze gong that's roughly based off the water gong. Over here I have the number zero bronze gong which is based off the old song creation earth gong. Here I have the number six bronze gong which is based off the symphonic gong. I kept the same number nine bronze gong down here and kept the 22 inch accent gong. So really just replacing things. And I, I'm debating on if I want these this way or to switch them around. This, the number six bronze gong is basically replacing the 28 inch Jupiter planet gong that was here. And the number zero is replacing the 22 inch sentent 
heavy wind gong that was here, which had actually replaced um, an old sound creation prototype that I had just to be a different sound. So I'm trying to keep similar sort of characters. This has that very stiff and kind of focused sound that the Jupiter gong has. This has the very dark and kind of open sound like the, the little wind gong did. This is similar to the sound creation gong, but it's really its own beast in a way. This is an intriguing gong that will take a lot of work to really get to understand and find, you know, the right mallets and everything on that. And then, of course, the number nine. And I actually have two number nines now, but I kept the same one. I'll be doing separate videos on all the bronze gongs that I have, just to give you an idea on them. I'll do the, the two water gongs, the two earth gongs, the symphonic gong and the number eight, and then I will do a video on both of the number nines I have and talk about the differences there. But I really, I had that question from Donald about, hey, why don't you show us how you pick up or pick out your setup and how you put things together. And it had been on the plan for later, but I thought, yeah, let's do it now. So here we have the other setup. And along with gong changes, I, I changed mallets some. I was using as my main mallets the Vic Firth GB1. Now, along with the Peisty gongs, they sent me some new mallets, an M4 and an M5 with wooden handles. And if you know me at all, you know I hate metal handle mallets. And I love wooden ones. That's why I've been using these for so long. And not that I don't like the Peisty mallets, the normal ones, but I just don't like metal handles. So I prefer wooden handles. These are fabulous. I hope these will become something that they will offer. Number four and number five. There's also a special one here, kind of a cartwheel head, similar to the GB2 Vic Firth. Again, nice wooden handle. But the big difference with the Peisty mallets is they're really weighted. They weigh a lot more in the head, which is good because the bronze gongs so far are much stiffer than the nickel silver gongs. And they need a little more oomph to get them going. So the, the heavier weighted mallets work out really well. So I've also brought in, this is an old Mike Balter GM2 that I covered in fur. It's a big, heavy yarn wound mallet, but I put the fur on it to give it a little softer attack. But this one is also heavy. It's probably about as heavy as the M5. So a change up in mallets. And that's the thing you have to do. You really have to find the appropriate mallets for each instrument. And that's why I have hundreds and hundreds of mallets because I have so many different instruments. And sometimes I want to bring out different sounds, so I use different mallets. And if you look back, I was using this Mike Balter B18. It's a bass marimba mallet on that little sentent gong. Because it was so sensitive, the bigger mallets would tend to overpower it. I'd be playing and I would hit it and it would just like way too much. So I used a slightly smaller, lighter mallet that I could control better to get the sound I wanted out of that gong. So to me, that's always an important thing. It's a big part of the exploration I do here in my studio, playing stuff, trying different mallets, finding what works for me. And as you can see, I have two mallet trays here. So I've got mallets handy. They're not on the floor. I don't have to bend over, look for them and all that. They're, they're right here. So I can just turn around and grab a mallet. On my performance setup, I actually have a third mallet tray here right under this gong, which is normally where I put the larger mallets. On the side ones, like over here, I normally have my flumi and some smaller mallets. Here I have all the mallets for the percussion mainly. So that's a little bit, you know, how I work out my setup. Obviously, you have to 
find what works for you. All right, let's try, let's go through these gongs and we'll look at, you know, sort of the differences between the other setup and also the similarities of what I was trying to do. I really wanted to kind of keep sort of the same atmosphere, I guess you could say. So here's the symphonic 32 inch. sound. It's a little different splash than the, the old water gong. As I said, I will be doing a, a video on all the bronze gongs and compare them to the other gongs that they're based on. So watch for that. that I like yet with the bronze water gong it's a little bigger so it's a little darker also darker from the the bronze maybe have a little more power I love the sound so I really look forward to working with this one now over here I have the Number zero, earth type. With that nice full deep sound in the middle. And there's a sweet spot right here where you, I don't know if you can hear it, these highs come out that are really nice. with down here what I like about this it has more highs to it or this has it's really more lows and mids the highs don't get in those upper reaches where this one gets a, a little higher so they I think they blend well Six, which I 
used to replace the Jupiter Planet gong. This one, it really brings out a lot of highs. That real classic Peisty white noise wash sort of sound, that up there. Whereas on the bronze one, it never gets up there. It, it stays lows and the, the crashy highs are actually mids. I mean, there is some high end, but the the focus, the fundamental sound in there is the actual note, the bass note of the gong and the, the mids in there. Compared to over here. because they sort of have a universal sound of everything. And you can really tell that when you crash a symphonic, it's fairly balanced. You've got the lows, you got the mids, and you got the highs. Where here, it's almost like they put a filter on it and they cut the highs out. And it's really more lows and mids, just some highs in there. I like that aspect of it. The other thing I like about it, it has that sort of when, when you hit it, it opens up and has sort of that blah sort of sound. Blah, as opposed to just ah or ka, different sort of sounds. And I always like that character in a gong. This one has that somewhat too. six for its very solid dark tone and I think it's a fantastic gong I think it would balance any planet gong or symphonic gong really well if you're looking to add another voice to your set okay and then here's the accent again nice focused in the middle but a really nice crash it's sort of that you can hear how they, they work well together. switch these two around or maybe keep them this way I sort of like them this way it just is just for movement not for sound as much as for movement and what I want to go to from when I'm on the symphonic I kind of like having this darker sound here for a change this is actually where I used to put my 32 inch uh, sound creation earth gong for many many years I had that there, so I'm used to having that darker earth tone here. So I wanted to go back to that. And conversely, the, the planet Jupiter Gong was always here. So it was symphonic earth planet. So now I sort of have that same character again that I like working with. All right, let me just play them all together. And then we'll add some percussion and do a few things. And you can see how 
these blend and what you think of these compared to the other setup. So there you go, a bit about how I put together a setup, combine sounds, combine textures to make a harmonious whole setup. Not separate gongs, separate bells and things, but really one instrument, sort of an orchestra of metal. So if you liked what you heard, what you saw, Hit subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to be notified, click the little bell and it will send you a notification when there's a new video up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them. I really like having a dialogue with all of you. I don't want to just be up here making videos and playing stuff and it's like I'm talking to myself or talking to a wall. I really appreciate 
all the comments I get on YouTube, on Facebook, the emails I get about the videos. And I do answer all of them. So if you have questions, please put them in there. I love it. It's great. This is all, yeah, this is about communication. This is why I'm doing the videos. This is about a transmission of what I know from 50 years of experience to hopefully help you out in your career and what you are doing, playing the gongs, playing percussion, whatever. So thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Bye.